by sea, air, and land, for the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. That the Lord God mercifully accept upon his spiritual altar this thanksgiving and supplication of his unworthy servant, the priest Anthony, and in his compassion have mercy on us. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. That the Lord God not reject the thanksgiving which his servant, Father Anthony, offers with a contrite heart for the benefits received from him, that he accepted as a sweet aroma of incense and as a rich offering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That the Lord God now hear the supplication of his servant, Father Anthony, and fulfill the good intentions and desires which benefit his faithful people always granting his mercy the petitions of his holy church and of each of us let us pray to the lord lord have mercy that the lord god deliver his holy church and his servant father anthony and of all all of us from affliction distress wrath need and from every visible and invisible enemy and safeguard the life of his servant beneath the sheltering wings of his angels, and grant them peace, health, and long life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we be delivered from all affliction, wrath, and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. With you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is your glory, honor, and worship now and ever and forever.
Wisdom be attentive. Come, let us worship and bow before Christ. O Son of God, what is in your saints? forsake the world. You are the mother of life and have been transferred to life. And through your prayers, you deliver our souls from death. We, your unworthy servants, O Lord, are grateful for your great blessings bestowed on us. And glorify you, we praise and bless you. We give thanks and we sing hymns to you. Humbly extolling your loving kindness, we cry out with love. Glory to your benefactor and Savior. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. O Master, you have freely granted your benefits and gifts to your unworthy servants. Therefore we have come to offer thanksgiving as much as we are able. Praising you, our benefactor and creator, we exclaim, O God, most merciful, glory to you. Now and ever and forever, amen. The grave and death did not be the Theotokos. She intercedes without rest and is our unfailing hope of protection. For he who dwelt in the womb of the ever-Virgin transfers to life the Mother of life. And forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, In God my 
Savior. Wisdom. A reading from the epistle of St. Paul, the apostle to the Colossians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, put on compassion, kindness, lowliness, meekness, and patience, Forbearing one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you all must, must also forgive. And above all things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Peace to you, reader. Wisdom be attentive. Hallelujah. 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 I will praise God's name in a song. I will glorify him with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then said Jesus, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Glory to you.
22 years ago, on the 17th of August, I was ordained to the priesthood at Our Lady of Peace Church uh, at the hands of uh, Bishop uh, Basil Schott, who later on became the Metropolitan Basil, but now has passed away. So we remember him in this liturgy too. Uh, it's hard to believe it was 22 years ago, but uh, it's been a, a long and sh seems it has flown by so fast, but then it suddenly seems like a long time ago. So I think it is both. Uh, I just want to say a few things about uh, Holy Priesthood um, and also weave that into the feast that we're celebrating, which is the Dormition of the Mother of God. So we're still the octave, the octave of the Dormition of the Mother of God, and uh, we'll weave that in like humbly. Uh, first of all, everyone here who's baptized has a share in the Holy Priesthood of Christ. When we were baptized, we were chrismated or confirmed, we became the anointed ones of God, the Christians. Christians, christening is another term they use for baptism sometimes, because there was an anointing that took place. Chrismation, persons were baptized and they were anointed or chrismated uh, at the time of the baptism, which is a practice that we still do in the Eastern Church. Um, so a person who was baptized was chrismated, and chrism, you take the M off, put a T there, it's Christ. Okay? Because yeah. um, Christ is the anointed one. Chrism is anointing oil. And uh, Christ is Christos, the anointed one, or Latin Christus. And, uh, of course, we are called Christians because we are his anointed ones. Okay, but what does that mean? Script scripturally, there is three big roles that people had who re were anointed into that role. Those are the Jewish priests, sometimes the prophets, and then kings. So we see when it says, God was told Moses to get a vial of oil and to pour that oil on the head of Aaron, his brother, because he is going to be the high priest okay, for Israel. But that's one thing we say when the priest puts on uh, his epitrachillion, which is the around the neck thing, because it's called epitrachillion, uh, the stole. We say, O oh Lord, send down your grace upon your priest as you poured oil upon the head of Aaron the high priest. That oil which ran down his head, his beard, even to the hem of his garment. And uh, you've heard me talk about this before, some of you. Uh, and that's kind of what the, for the priestly stole goes down straight. The bishops has a little bit different. But the deacon has another way of his orarian a picture Kilion and the Omophorion is what the bishop wears. But anyways, so in a sense, so when we put that on, it represents that oil, the anointing oil, which runs down the head of the high priest, his beard, even to the hem of his garment, is the grace, the life-giving grace of the Holy Spirit. And that's why when we uh, anoint people, or when we do different things, Holy Mysteries, the Sacramental Mysteries, we use this. So, uh, people are absolved from their sins, we place the epitrachia on the head, because the healing oils of the Lord come upon that person who has just confessed. Persons who get married, we put the epitrachia on their hands to show the union between themselves in Christ. When I was ordained, uh, as a deacon, uh, basically it's the same thing. Is the priest, the bishop, puts his uh, stole on the head and puts his hand on there, it's just in different ways, uh, at different times, uh, in the ordination service. But anyways, um, so uh, so the epitrachillion is a great symbol of, of uh, that grace of God, 
And it, and it says that's the, the role of a priest, is to bring the anointing, the healing oils of the Lord into the world. That divine <coughs> healing balm into the world. That's what our role is supposed to be. Okay? Um, you know, the first priest, theologians say, was actually Adam. Because <laughs> a priest, ultimately, is one who helps to unify. And Adam, in himself, unified all creation. Because he was taken from the earth. He says he was taken from the, the slime of the earth, and God builds him into a man, and they breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. <coughs> so he's taken from earth, which is, has elements in common with animals and plants and other things. But then it says that God inclines himself, and he breathes into his nostrils the breath of life. So there's something in man that's also heavenly, divine, because the soul comes from God. So that's, it's not derived from the ground, like the body was. But the soul is infused by God, that person. So, what does it mean about Adam? He has elements in common with everything else in the world. Okay? So that's why we have some features or other animals, plants, minerals, and stuff like that. We have all those things in common. Okay? But only human beings have a soul, a rational soul. But in Adam, that spiritual and corporeal elements are put together. It is one person. That which is of heaven and that which is of earth are all unified in the person of Adam. So Adam, before his fall, was kind of the sum of all creation united to God. When Adam and Eve sin, they lose fellowship with God. So now there's this break. So in, a, in one sense, the whole of creation is upset. So the creation rebels. Thorns and thistles shall the earth bring forth for you. Because you broke that union. All creation could say, poetically speaking, you are the link between us and the divine. Because you had a soul which was filled with grace. And a body that's in communion with us, and a soul in communion with God, but you're only one person. But now, by your breaking yourself off of the Lord, you have broken us off from the Lord too, in a different way. Human beings were, were meant to continue the role of God in creation. Of bringing all things to God, to be the unit, be the unifiers of all creation, and then, of course, we know that they fell into sin. And by sin, Adam and Eve hide. After they sin, they hide. It's division. Why did you do this, my wife? Okay, you can sense this division between these two people, and then. Then the other results are there's alienation now also between them and the rest of creation. Thorns and thistles. Okay. It says the whole of creation was left in futility and awaited the revelation, the restoration of the sons of God. So when Adam and Eve sinned, the whole of creation was groaning in a kind of an emptiness, futility waiting for the time for mankind to be restored back, back to God, and then he can summon the whole world again. Mountains and hills, bless the Lord. Seas and rivers, bless the Lord. So that's what the, the priest does. That's what Adam and Eve were supposed to be, to summon all creation into that union. But then by their sin, they ruptured this throughout the whole universe. Okay. And of course, human beings can never restore this. So we say, God loved the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to redeem the world, to reunite it to Himself. So Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
the Son of the Ever Virgin Mary, is the eternal priest. And he's priest not just because of a role he plays, but he is priest in himself. Kind of like how Adam was, priest in himself. And his very being was united heaven and earth, divine and human. Now Christ is truly God, who took on a true human nature from the Virgin Mary, but he's one person. And in Christ, heaven and earth are wedded together. God and man are one. So, so Christ, from the very first moment of his existence in the womb of the Virgin Mary, was priest. Because the elements of the world and God, the eternal Son of God, are joined in the womb of the Virgin Mary. So Christ is the high priest. And now all of us who are baptized, we're called to share in Christ's priesthood, to be unifiers, to reconcile the world. It says God has reconciled the world to himself through Christ. But then it says, but he has given to us the message of reconciliation. And Christ has given to us the ministry of reconciliation making us ambassadors for Christ, and through us saying, be reconciled to God, as St. Paul says. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Um, so all of us are called to do that. That's what all of us are supposed to be doing. If we're causing division among people, we're not acting in a priestly way. But when there is division in the world, we're helping to unify people, not on compromise, not on false things, but helping to unify people with the truth that truly unifies, even if externally, for a while, people are, feel divided by that. But we know Christ came, and he's priest in himself, and Christ said that he knew that his mission was not really to bring peace into the world, not immediately at least, but the sword, the division. Because that's what's going to happen when people are faithful to Christ. They are going to experience division within themselves because there's a struggle that goes on in ourselves and division with us in the world. <clears throat> but anyways, so Christ, by baptism, gives us a share in the life of God. And through chrismation, we are anointed. And we become with Christ that restored priesthood. And that's what our life's supposed to be. Whatever it is, whatever jobs we have, whatever roles we have, it's priestly. There's a ministerial priesthood composed of the holy orders, primarily in the episcopacy, the bishops, the presbyterate the priesthood, and the diaconate in Christ, which is the deacons. And we have minor orders too. But Everyone in the church is called to a priestly role, not exactly in the same way. Israel, Moses said, you're a royal nation, a holy priesthood, a nation of priests. Yet in Israel, they had a Levitical priesthood, which is distinct from everyone else. Not everyone could be a priest. You had to be from the tribe of Levi, okay, and things like that, okay. Um, but anyways, what we see in the Mother of God is something complementary. Her Son is the one who reconciles the world to God. But in the Virgin Mary, in her own way, this true human person, Mother of God, receives into her body God the Son, the eternal God. And in her womb, heaven and earth are knitted together. They're wedded together in her. So her mother, her, her, uh, maternity, her maternity, her divine maternity, is a priestly thing, too, that complements the priesthood of Christ. It's such a rich thing, this whole uh, thing about priesthood. But I just want to read something I read a couple weeks ago in the parish, but I just want to read this again, because this has to do with all of us in our own ways, according to our own ranks. Okay. This is a prayer that the priest says before offering the Holy Eucharist. 
So when everyone is uh, singing, uh, let us and Mr. represent the cherubim and sing the tribes like uh, that, 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 that hymn, the, the Trubicon, uh, the priest is saying this, no one who is bound by carnal desires and pleasures is worthy to come to you or to approach you to minister to you the king of glory. This is a priest who has, has hands up this time, okay? For to minister to you, O Lord, is great and awesome even to the heavenly powers, the angels themselves. Yet, because of your ineffable, immeasurable love for mankind, you, unchanged and unchangeable, became man. You were designated our high priest, the master of all, and entrusted to us the priestly service of this liturgical and unbloody sacrifice. You alone, O Lord our God, rule over all things in heaven and on earth. You are born aloft upon the tribute throne. You are the Lord of Israel, the King of Israel, the Lord of the Seraphim, who alone are holy and dwell in the holy sanctuary. Therefore, this is where the priest is saying this, I beseech you, O Lord, who alone are good and ready to hear, look favorably upon me, your sinful and unprofitable servant. Cleanse my heart and soul of an evil conscience, and by the power of your Holy Spirit enable me, who have been clothed with the grace of priesthood, to stand before this, your holy table, in the priestly service of your sacred and pure body and precious blood. In bowing my head, I approach you and implore you, turn not your face away from me, nor exclude me from among your children, but allow these gifts to be offered to you by me, your sinful and unworthy servant. For you yourself, O Christ our God, you yourself offer and are offered, you receive and are redistributed, and we give glory to you, together with the Eternal Father, your all holy good life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. So all of us are going to be offering this holy sacrifice in our own way, okay, as the body of Christ. And when the priest says, lift up, and lift your hearts up to the Lord, then we say, yes, I offer myself. I offer my life, my family, my troubles, the ones I have problems with, the ones I have friends with, all these things, all these things that are troubling me, my strengths, my weaknesses, I offer these up to you, O oh Lord. So let's do that today. Let's act in unity in the priest of Christ. So thank you for coming to this liturgy. And uh, we just had to continue being the Lord's priestly people. And pray for me then in my own way, in my own uh, ministerial priesthood, that I be faithful to the Lord. And, uh, uh, and I can give thanks to you and to the Lord for this uh, uh, opportunity to serve him in this way. To him be praise and glory now to ages of ages. Amen. <laughs> Master, 
with fear and trembling, your servant gives thanks for your loving kindness and for the abundant benefits you have showered on him. Bowing low before you and praising you, our God, we cry out in humility. Deliver your servant from every misfortune, and because you were merciful, fulfill his good desires. We pray you here, and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, in your mercy, you have heard the prayers of your servant, and have shown him the goodness of your love. In the past, you have not sustained his prayers, so now fulfill the good desires of your servant. Overlooking his transgressions, show your bountiful mercy to us all. We pray you here and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Gracious Master, may our thanksgiving be acceptable before the majesty of your glory as a sweet aroma of incense and as a rich offering. Send down your rich mercy and bounties on us every day. Deliver your holy church in this community from the assaults of every visible and invisible enemy. Let your people live sinlessly in health and long life and grant them progress in all that is good. We pray you, O most merciful King, here and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the people here present who await your great and abundant mercy. For those who show us mercy, and for all Christians of the true faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For you, our merciful Holy God, we give glory to you, all the Son and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever.
his kingdom, all you Christians of the true faith, always, now, and ever, and forever. <clears throat> May the Lord God remember in his kingdom our Holy Father, Francis Pope of Rome, our most reverend Metropolitan uh, William, the venerable constituent to the acted in Christ, the minor order, the monastic order, our civil authorities, all the armed forces, and all the service of our country, the noble ever memorable founders and benefactors of this holy church. May the Lord God remember his kingdom, all you Christians of the true faith, always, now, and ever, and forever. Amen. For the precious gifts placed before us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. The Lord God Almighty, who alone are holy, receive the sacrifice of praise for those who call upon you with their whole heart. Accept also the prayer of us sinners, bring us to your holy altar, enable us to offer you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and for the people's failings. Make us worthy to find favor in your sight, that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you. That the good spirit of your grace rests on us and on the gifts of your presence, and on all your people. Grant this to the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your holy, good life, and the Spirit, and whatever, and forever. Amen. Again, and 
glory of the Jesus living in the dead, and whose kingdom will have no end, and in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father. Together with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets. In one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I profess one baptism for the remission of sins. I expect the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us stand our right. Let us stand in awe. Let us be attentive to offer the holy anaphora in peace. Mercy, peace of sacrifice of praise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit.
of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all, all of you. And with our spirit. Now that we have commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, that our God who loves us all may receive them on his holy, heavenly, and mystical altar as an aroma of spiritual fragrance, and send down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. May we be delivered from all affliction, wrath, and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. That this whole evening be perfect, holy, peaceful, and without sin. Let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide and guardian of our souls and bodies, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For pardon and remission of our sins and offenses, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For what is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For we spend the rest of our life in peace and repentance, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For a Christian, painless, unashamed, peaceful end of our life, and for a good account before the fearsome judgment seat of Christ, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For asking for unity in the faith and for communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ, our God. To you, o Lord. and without condemnation, the earth by you, Father, God of heaven, and us Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day,
through the God of Jesus Christ, for he is the Prince of Party, and Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, for the mission of sin, for life, and last, and then. We ask 
our prayers. You deliver our souls from death. O Theotokos, in giving birth, you preserved virginity. And in your falling asleep, you did not forsake the world. You are the mother of life and have been transferred to life. And through your prayers, you deliver our souls from death. O Theotokos, in giving birth, you preserve virginity. And in your falling asleep, you did not forsake the world. You are the mother of life and have been transferred to life. And through your prayers, you deliver our souls from death. The blessed Lord be upon you through his grace and loving kindness, always, now and ever, and forever. Amen. Glory to Christ our God. Glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and forever. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Give the blessing. May Christ our true God. Have mercy on us to save us through the prayers of his most true mother, whose glorious adormission we celebrate this day, and uh, through the prayers of the Holy Father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop Constantinople, and the author of this liturgy, and uh, through the prayers of our Holy Father among the saints, Basil, the great Archbishop of Caesarea in Cappadocia, patron of this holy church and through the prayers of all the saints, for Christ is good, <coughs> and he loves mankind. Ah. Ah. Amen. To Father Anthony, on the occasion of his anniversary ordination to the priesthood, grant, O Lord, many years. God grant you many years. God grant him many years. God grant him many blessed years. The Lord God grant to his servants, the priest of Michael and the priest Anthony, peace, health, and happiness for many years. God grant them many years. God grant them many years. God grant them many blessed years. The Lord God grant to the servant, Father Deacon Craig, and to all of you present here, peace, health, and happiness for many years. God grant them many years. God grant them many years. God grant them many blessed years. In health and happiness, in health and happiness, God grant them many blessed years. Oh, 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 Love and 